Hello and welcome once again. My name is Natty Cash and welcome to part 7 of the NCAA Imperialism. Uh, the map here has changed very drastically since the beginning, but there's still a lot more changes to happen. Throughout this video, I do apologize if I'm a little extra growly today. I'm just recovering from sickness. But uh, without further ado, let's get right into it to see who is the best college basketball program in the country. If uh, you're looking for the first part of this series, please make sure you click the look at the look at the description below to find a link to the video for part one. Um, as you can see, right, the map has changed a fair bit, um, and uh, yeah, we'll get into things here. So we're at the uh, spinner here, less than 250 teams left at this point. We'll see how close we can get to that 200, and we start off with the Villanova Wildcats. As Villanova are going to try to expand, they've already done a little bit of expansion, but they're going to try to go to the northwest. And based on where they are, northwest takes them against the Lehigh Mountain Hawks. And it is Villanova that takes the win. Although it was pretty close at halftime with Lehigh taking a small lead. But Villanova was able to take the rest of the way for a pretty comfortable win in the end. And Villanova expanding for the second time. Gets a nice big piece out of Pennsylvania and extends further inland. But back again we are with the wheel. Let's see where we go next. Looks like we're heading down to Louisiana to visit the Bulldogs. The first time we've seen from them, let's see what direction they're going to try to expand. They're going to try to go basically directly north, which means they're pushing their way into Arkansas against the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions. That's a mouthful. Let's see how this matchup plays out. And it is Louisiana Tech that takes this pretty easily. There's really no doubt in it that Louisiana Tech took the lead and never squandered it. And just like that, Louisiana Tech has a bit of Arkansas. And I know that uh, this color clashes a fair bit with the Memphis border here, but um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, maybe that will be played out later on. But back to the wheel once more to see where we head next. And we're into Cincinnati. As Cincinnati will try to expand, I think for the first time, going to the northeast. Which means for Cincinnati, well, anything that's to the north puts them up against Ball State. So we'll get rid of this clash once and for all, of these two uh, dark teams here. And even though this was a really close one, Cincinnati do get the win. They had a pretty good lead, and Ball State worked hard to get back into it in the second half. But Cincinnati did just enough to pull out the victory. And just like that, Cincinnati gets their first conquest and takes up a nice piece of the board of, I guess, most a little bit of Ohio, but expanding mostly into Indiana. And once again, we're back at the lovely spinner to see where we head next. And we're going to go to Kent State who once again get to expand, but what direction are they going to try to move? They're going to try to go north, as Kent State want to really wrap up most of Ohio, Ohio, Ohio sorry, want to wrap up most of Ohio by taking on Cleveland State. And as you would know it, Kent State once again takes um, another piece of land here, extending their reach into the state of Ohio. And with that, Kent State now have a significant part of Ohio. And they've really taken the opportunity to expand and be the dominant force in that state. And back again at the wheel. Let's see where we're headed next. And we're going to go to the St. Bonaventure Bonnies. Now, they haven't had a chance to expand yet. But they're going to try to go a little bit to the north, uh, I guess more like the northeast, which means that they are going to try to take on the Buffalo Bulls as their first piece of conquest. And it is the Buffalo Bulls that get the victory here. Uh, close game at the beginning, but after a while the Bull Buffalo started to pull their way out, 
and eventually got the victory. And just like that, the Buffalo Bulls get their first bit of expansion as they push south and take a little bit of Pennsylvania, a little bit of New more of New York, and put themselves on the map a little bit bigger. But back to the wheel we go to see who we see next. We've got a lot of East Coast and Midwest teams, but this time we get to go to the West Coast and see New Mexico. This will be their first chance to expand as they try to then go to the West, which means that they're going to try to expand by taking on Northern Arizona. And in a very close contested battle, the Lobos do end up getting the victory. Um, and they are up for a little bit, but then Northern Arizona brought it back, and it was back and forth throughout the whole second half, with New Mexico just getting the two-point victory at the end. And with that, New Mexico has now expanded significantly into Arizona, being putting their hand in the ring of who's going to end up painting Arizona red. Out of them, Arizona, UNLV. Who knows? But back again... We go to the wheel, see where we're landing next, and we go to the Evansville Purple Aces. Well, they get a chance to expand for the first time, as they're going to try to go to the west, maybe a little bit to the northwest, which means that they're going to avoid some of the big teams around them and go against the Southern Indiana Screaming Eagles. And in a very tight one that was back and forth throughout the whole game, it is Southern Indiana that do get the one-point win at the very end to help get their first conquest going in this series. And just like that, Southern Indiana take their first piece of land, taking over uh, from Evansville here, and have basically doubled their land in uh, the southern part of Indiana. But we keep on going. We see where we go next. And we're kind of in the same area where we're going to see the Southern Illinois Salukes. Sal Salukes? I apologize for butchering their mascot's name, but um, they're going to then also head into the uh, west direction, which means that they're going to take on the St. Louis Billikens. And uh, it is St. Louis that ends up coming up with the win. It's close in the first half, but St. Louis took a lead. Southern Illinois tried to then bring it back, but were not able to bring up the big deficit and ended up losing by a five-pointer. And St. Louis gets their first chance to expand as they expand into further into Illinois. But do we keep going? We've got a lot of uh, teams in the uh, Rust Belt area, but we're heading back to the state of New York as we go see Cornell. And Cornell is going to try to expand for the first time, as they're going to try to go north, which means they're up against the Syracuse Orange. And in surprising fashion, at least from what I understand of basketball, Cornell basically demolishes Syracuse. There was never a point in this game that they are losing. That is incredible. Um, I did not see this coming at all based on the reputation that Syracuse has. And uh, look at them go. Cornell is going to then get a huge piece of land. Because not only does Cornell take up all this space that Syracuse had in New York, Syracuse had also taken some land from Vermont as well. So Cornell has just expanded pretty significantly in, uh, in both New York and in Vermont. But once again, we go to the wheel see where we're headed next and it looks like we're sticking in a similar area as we go see the Penn State Nittany Lions and uh, this will be their first time that we've seen them in action as they're gonna try to go to the uh, Northwest which means they're gonna go up against Buffalo who just recently expanded um, earlier in this video and it is Penn State that takes this pretty dominantly there wasn't really a time where they they were losing, and uh, they will get a chance to expand for the first time. And with that, the Litany Lions have taken a nice big chunk of land here, and have really then uh, 
put their first presence on the map so far. And here we go again, back to the wheel. Got a lot of teams from the east and the midwest. Are we staying there again? Uh, looks like we're going down to Arlington. And let's see where they end up going. As they're going to try to go to the northeast, which for them means that they're going to take on Sam Houston State. See if they can take them down, who have done a good job of expanding so far. And it is Sam Houston State that once again get the win against the Mavericks. And even though it's just a small piece of land, Sam Houston State once again gets to expand further into Texas. But uh, now that we are in the West Coast, do we stay there or do we go back to the East Coast? Well, we're headed to Butler. The first time for this team to try to expand as they're going to try to go to the Northeast, which means for Butler, they're going to then expand into Cincinnati. And it is Cincinnati once again with the victory. Close game for most of it, but Cincinnati pulled away in the latter stages of the second half to earn another victory. And just like that, Cincinnati once again gets to take more territory and expands even further into Indiana. But once again, back at the wheel. Let's see where we're headed next. Is it going to be a new matchup, an old matchup? We'll see. But we're going to go see Boston College. And I don't think we've seen much expansion in Massachusetts at all during this. Um, but they're going to try to go to the southwest, which means they're going to try to expand into Rhode Island to take on the Bryant Bulldogs. And the Bulldogs are not having it as they dominate Boston College. Not one point during this game were they behind. And like that, Bryant pushes their way into Massachusetts. And just like that, Bryant takes a piece of Massachusetts and gets their first piece of land. Let's keep on going to see who we get next. Maybe it'll be a new team. But we're headed off to North Carolina. They haven't had a chance to expand yet, but they're going to try by going to the southwest, which means that they're going to take on UNC Greensboro. And it is the Spartans of Greensboro that do get the win. Uh, even though it was only an 11-point win, they led basically the whole time and get their first piece of land. And remember, it doesn't matter how big that piece of land is that you get. It's just a reminder that you, as a program, are still on the board. And here we are back at the, the uh, lovely wheel here as we head to Eastern Kentucky. Now, Eastern Kentucky has done some expansion in the past. But it's going to then try to go to the east. And I think it's hard to tell. It's pretty close on whether it's pointing at Kentucky or uh, eastern Tennessee here. But I think it, if we're going east with a little bit south, it's pointing at Kentucky. So a big Kentucky matchup happening right now. And what was a really tight game with actually having eastern Kentucky leading most of the second half. Kentucky just comes out at the very end to win it by two points. What a huge game. And just like that, Kentucky now has a majority of the state and probably has one of the biggest land masses in this part of the country. Just incredible. And we're back again. Let's see what part of the country we're headed to next. It looks like we're headed to Michigan. Now Michigan did a fair bit recently I think in a previous video and they're gonna try to go to the south uh, southeast here which only means that Michigan are gonna take on Kent State. This is a huge game because whoever wins this is gonna get a huge bit of land and it's really gonna be a dominant force in this area. And it is once again Kent State that continues to win and continues to build their landmass. I think only were losing at one point in the game, ended up pulling out a four point win in the end. And just like that, Kent State owns a ton of land here, and I don't even know really to put the logo. I think I'm gonna keep the logo 
kind of where it originated in Ohio here. But one, they've got a huge bit of land, but that also means that they're now a target for a number of teams that are now bordering this huge piece of land. And uh, let's see where we can go next. See if we're going to see a new team or we're going to see another team expand. And we're headed to the Georgetown Hoyas. They have not had a chance to expand yet, but let's see what direction they're trying to go first. They're going to try to go to the uh, southeast, and I really had to zoom into this area here because if you go exactly where the arrow went, there is a tiny little border that connects Georgetown to Navy, and that's what I'm going to have to rule as, that Georgetown is going to take on Navy. And it is Navy that does get the win, Georgetown had a pretty significant lead, but squandered it in the second half, and Navy was able to take advantage and take home the win. And I did take a moment to try to redraw the little District of Columbia here, um, and just show that Navy has now taken that whole area. Look at that. And I know it's only a small pit piece of land, but that just means that Navy's still in it. And we're back to the wheel again to see where we're headed next. Let's see what we've got here. Well, we're gonna go up north and go to Yale. Yale has had a chance to expand once already. Let's see where they're gonna go. They're gonna go straight north, which means they're gonna take on Sacred Heart and could get a pretty big piece of land out of it. And it is Yale that does take the victory. And it ended up being a non-contest as they take the win pretty handily. And like that, Yale now takes a pretty significant piece of land, takes a little bit north too, and expands into three other states, and becomes just one of three teams left in the state of Connecticut. And here we are back to the wheel, where we are headed off next. And it looks like we're headed to Towson. And Towson, I believe, has expanded once before. See where they're going? They're going directly south, which means they're going up against Navy as well. Maybe a chance for Navy to expand some more.